Hello again and welcome to Suds and Country. Hi, I'm Herb Suds and welcome to the show. I happen to have one of the most diverse entertainers in Nashville today. Her name is Pam Tillis. How you doing, Pam? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about your new album, Thunder and Roses. All right. We're here with at Six Flags, and you can hear the <laughs> roller coasters in the background. So. Boy, they're right there, aren't they? I'm they just looking are. up at them as we go by. <laughs> Yeah, this Thunder and Rose is a new album. Why did it take you three years to come out with a new album? Oh, it was about maybe two and a half. Okay. But, but it, you know, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, everybody kind of takes longer than they used to. You know, it's so competitive. They don't, like in my dad's era, they put one out every six months. Well, they cost a lot but, more now to make. But, and uh, and also, tell you what, I had, um, I had an album uh, out... Um, and, and in the middle of my album previous to this one, my record label went through a lot of changes. Right. So they that. only released a couple of singles from that. And then they just were regrouping on some other things. So while, while they were busy doing that, I just kind of regrouped creatively and, and just put a, together a new album. I think, we, let's go back to what you just said in your dad's era, of course, Mel Tillis. Uh, they only released like one or two singles off each album. Now yeah. they're releasing more singles off they, an album. They do a lot of times, a lot, yes. A lot of songs off Yes. Them. This is a melodic exuberance, musical adult barometer. Why are you going with such a adult type of a of a album as opposed to your humorous songs like Cleopatra and Maybe Vida Loca? Loca? You did such a great job with them. You know, it's just... Um I think you're darned if you do and darned if you don't <laughs> because I've had a lot of success with it. On the other hand, uh, I put out something I thought was pretty funny and uh, it didn't get any airplay. So yeah. you, you get kind of... Uh, well, Vida Loca was a good uh, that song. That was a good song. That was a but what about Betty's Got a Bass Boat? See, I love that song. Yeah, Betty had a bass and boat. And they wouldn't play that on the radio, so... They wouldn't They wouldn't give you airplay, No, huh? no. So I, 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 you know what? If I find a great funny song, I'll do it. But I won't cut one for the sake of doing it. Cleopatra was the number one. I, it was It was a definitely, yes. It was the number one was song it, for you. Was it? I thought it was a top ten. I, maybe. I, I yeah. thought it said yeah, I think it's number one with my fans. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk they still ask for it. Let's talk about a couple little songs on your new okay. album, please. So you like the funny stuff, though. Well, you do. You did a good job with it. Well, cool. Well, good. I'll see if I can find another one like that. Hey, but let's talk about Please. It's All a right. single mom's entering a dating scene, basically. Yeah, yeah. sort of like, a, somebody said it was like the female version of, a, what was the Garth Brooks song, Starting Over Again? Oh, okay. Yeah, sort of like that. And how about uh, Off White? Off White. Which is out of Second Chances? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a song about getting, you know, I I wanted to have a song that was expressly for people getting remarried, a well, wedding song for people getting remarried. I thought, nobody's done that. There you go. How about Which Five Years, Aging Gracefully? Yeah. That's a, which five years is an uh, interesting question. You know question. what, that uh, was the first song I found for the album and one of my favorite lyrics on the album. I love that lyric. I, I, haven't, I didn't hear that song yet. Which, well, how about doing that? Waiting well, in the wind. Waiting on the wind. Yep. A, a lot of people were waiting on that duet, yeah. so we finally you, got well, it Well, you done. sang that for years and years with him anyway. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, we finally got it. Put it on track, huh? Yeah, I'm real proud of that. How about doing with Vince Gill? Well, any excuse well, to sing with Vince you Gill, you know, what... What, what the heck? How much of a reason do you need? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Every song has personal impact on this album. And did you and you, did you write any songs on this album? Uh, Off White. Off White. Yeah. Um, how do you find songs that have a personal impact from other artists? Is it from, from other, other writers? writers? From other writers. How does it relate? It's harder to relate or not harder to relate? No, I think the... It's easier to relate? I, no, it's... It, 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 I don't think... Uh, I think out of the thousand songs I listen to every, you know, for every album, I just find ones that, that ring true for me, you know. I, I, I can't explain it. It's more like a gut reaction. When you hear it, you yeah, know it. Yeah, yeah. I read in one of the quote of yours is, it's when people find something of themselves in the music that rewards me the most. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, as a communicator, whether you're writing a novel or telling a joke or singing a song, uh, you're kind of holding a mirror up for people to look into, you know. I mean, we've all got our emotions and Absolutely. our humanity in we common, do. so I'm just thinking about the same stuff everybody that goes never. through every day. Yeah, that's I true. I like that slice people of think, life stuff. Yeah, slice of life, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You think about it, and you're lucky enough to sing about it. 
and then relate to people, be the communicator. I well, never... you know, people people give you feedback too. They tell you when a song helps them or moves them in some kind of way, and and that that is the most fulfilling thing for me. I went through a period where I was so ambitious and caught up in everything, I lost myself in the middle of it. Oh. Remember, do you remember saying that? I think that happens to a lot of people. You just get so darn busy, you don't know if you're coming or going. And, well, you and, were on uh, the road more at yeah, the time. Yeah, you and, know, it, it, right? it, it didn't help my, my marriage. My marriage uh, broke up. Right. It was just a, a very difficult time, very busy, very demanding. Um, I don't know. Some people walk through it easier than others. I, I, I'm thankful that, and, and some people, you know, take it a lot harder. No, oh, yeah. And get into drugs and drinking and stuff like that. And uh, I just went quietly crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you went just quietly crazy about it. A lot of people, a lot of people aren't quiet about it. I I like the gray in between, not the black and white. Yeah. What What do you mean by most people? It has to be this or that. Yeah. You like the. I don't think life is like that. I think sometimes when you're most like even in your saddest moments, you can find a chuckle, and, oh, yeah. and and sometimes when you're most happy, you can find something bittersweet that to be sad. You know, I, I just think life is more gray and, than black and white. I do. So I like but, songs that have but, a little subtlety to them, a little irony. People, do you think people in general handle gray better than black and white? Well, no. There are times when you have yeah, to have the black, black and, and white. white. You know, like there's. There's, you know, your morals. That, that, oh, yes. that That's pretty good if you can stick to those and keep that pretty black and white. <laughs> uh, you released an album at a time in the industry climate at best is apprehension and a worse fear. What's going on with the industry? Why? What's going on with this? I don't really care. <laughs> okay, there you go. That may, How's that that's for a good perfect. answer? That's perfect. I'm just doing my thing. You do it. I just care whether the audience claps at the end of the song. That's... And if they want to buy my records, they know where to find them. There you go. And we're doing all right. I, I think it is kind of... The, no, the one thing I will say sincerely yeah. is... The bad thing about fear is it stifles creativity. Okay. And I think that the music industry will, would best be served by not putting out cookie cutter artists. That's and what so I heard. And so if I they'll just look for people with unique voices and not, you know, different various knockoffs of other popular artists, I think, you know, everybody would be a lot better off. What and, I, and I'm thankful for my shot and oh, I've had yeah. 11 years on the charts and I, so I cannot complain about that. And, they go back you know, how did these songs? I think song, it'll all shake out. These songs go back to what, 1991 or 1990? 90, oh, 90, 90, yeah. yeah. Did, did you, you craft this album as opposed to assembling a... What do you mean by assembling a loose collection of songs? Well, I think sometimes you hear an album that, that people just put a bunch of songs together and they don't really have anything to do with each other. You know, there's not a concept. And what was the theory behind kind of a, What, what was the theory behind you putting a, a crafting and as opposed to assembling. I didn't understand. I didn't I don't, understand. I'm trying to make a yeah. statement. No, right. no. <laughs> no. I don't know what you're trying to. Say. Oh, I just I think that there's a common thread that runs through the songs instead okay. of oh, oh, being okay. very, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, you're right. I think that, if you listen to them, there's kind of a. They make sense coming from the same person. Okay. You know, they, Why so many producers on that Thunder and Rose album? <gasps> because I wanted to. Yeah, they're great. They're all they're good, great. and I they're thought, you know, if I. Well, it takes with two years an album. It would have taken me eight years to work with all those guys. Yeah. So I just knocked it all Brian, in. I, yeah, Brian, yeah, it was fun. I'm, one word. I'm just I, having fun. If, you, you, you know, are. Yeah. You, you're having a blast. Yeah. From what I read here, you know, you're doing. What What's the word adaptable mean in your? And all the articles that one word adaptable came up uh, quite a bit. A, I think I'm. I've just done a lot of different things. I'm not afraid of a challenge. That you can't be afraid to fall on your face. You no. can't be afraid to make a mistake. And so I've done a lot of different types of, you know, I've done session work as right. a demo singer, as a as a jingle singer. I've done TV. I've done Broadway. I've done, you know, just all different kind of things. And um, and I think that's what they meant by it. Read that one. Let's talk about your introduction into the Grand Ole Opry there by you, Marty Stewart. There you go. Well, that was perfect. That was perfect. Because we're just, you know, we're birds of a feather. <laughs> what, what number were you? What number are you? You know, that's a very good question. I think, do you know? I didn't read that word. I didn't, all the articles didn't put a number on. You know what? I, I really can't tell okay. you off the top of my head. Okay, 
Uh, usually, they, you know, they say, I know I was in Nashville when Garth was inducted into the Opry, and he was 65. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I usually put a I know number, that I'm the first woman of the new millennium. I, 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 I knew I, that. I got that. I got that. I got that. You got that. You got, I got that. that. Um, no, no, no. Here. There it is. New millennium. That's then right. joining the Opry. That's right. I got that. Um, how did it feel to be on the Opry stage when you next to Dad when you were eight years old? Scary. Scary. Yeah. Intimidating. That was the rhyming but auditorium. But I didn't know that word at age eight, but that's what it felt like. That was in the rhyming, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the old rhyming. The old rhyming. Which I still love to perform there. It They're, sounds so good. They went back there to do yes, a lot of shows yes. now. What's your fondest memory with Dad up at growing up? Oh, my gosh. You know, when he was... I think when Daddy was in his natural element, like when he was fishing or, yeah. you know, gardening or just when he was just being a real regular person, I like that side of him. <laughs> Personally, I like that. Well, I don't blame Almost you. Almost as good as that that funny stuttering guy. Oh, yeah. I, no, I, 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 I like I that better. I interviewed Dad about no, 12 years ago. But he also was a very inspiring performer to watch. Oh, yeah. And, and I feel like, you know, I was definitely moved by his music and by seeing, you know, what a great entertainer he was that was kind of a talk about intimidating and oh, all inspiring it was very, very did anybody expect you to be i think follow his sometimes steps? i, 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 I think some people have trouble letting go of that but for the most part ever since i kind of you know i always said that there was nothing wrong with my career that a hit wouldn't Not solve so once i kind of <laughs> got an go. identity in people's minds it was a little bit easier you, you, you're right yeah. you carved your own and way. i think it, i was fortunate to come out at a time when there were videos and there was so much video oh, exposure yeah. that also helped people gain an identity faster uh in country music than they had previously in dad's era they had to tour no. non-stop um, to really you know become well known dad performers. wasn't home much huh no. no. Let's talk about Smokey Joe. Okay. Well, it was a, a thrill and an honor and a lucky break. Just really a cool thing to do. I bet it was. Amazing. You were, according to this, the first... First woman... There, right here. First female country, country performer, performer on Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, I blazed a little trail for Reba. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was cool. It was well, just that... a fluke. A, a, a position came open. In that show, they, they had an idea they wanted to do guest artists, sure. and the producer was familiar with me and was a fan of mine, and somebody said, well, have you thought about a country artist? And they said, who? And they said, Pam Tillis. And he there says, would she be interested? And word got to me, back to me, and I'm like, would I be interested? Interested. What are you, crazy? No, I, I was... me to the great white really, way. <laughs> I'm there. All right. How you did television? How about the pop album in 1983? I never knew about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah? I, I like all different types of yeah. music, and I that was at a time, too, when I was not sure if there was... Daddy was still so popular, I just wasn't sure that I was going to ever be able to shake right. that, you know, step out of that shadow. So I thought, well, maybe I should do some other type of music. I knew I wanted to sing, but, um, you know, country music fit the best, and I'm glad oh, yeah. I'm glad they found room. I'm glad it's <laughs> absolutely. How about Jesus Christ Superstar? Oh, now you're going back. Yeah, of course. That, that was after my, uh, my Warner Brothers. I had a deal on Warner Brothers, and nothing really happened there. And before I signed with Arista, I had some downtime, and I hate to, I'm not a person who handles a lot of downtime very right. well. And I, I heard that uh, Tennessee Repertory was putting on Jesus Christ Superstar, and they were looking for a lead performer. And uh, I wasn't even a well-known performer, so I thought it was neat that they gave, you know, it's not like they were using me for my my you, you reputation. Started, started. But I, I auditioned, and I got the part, yeah. and I got a, a, a little bit of the bug for theater. Mm -hmm. How about the film? thing called love now that you know i can't brag about that too much that was a cameo i just played oh, oh, okay. myself it wasn't much of a stretch okay you really get stage fright yeah sometimes you do yeah after all these it is years. such a drag i'll yeah. tell you what i did two nights ago but but it's you're okay after a, yeah. a few minutes right okay but boy it can be as a lot of performers deal with this and they know it can be so uncomfortable the other night i sang uh the anthem for sixty thousand plus uh, at a NASCAR race, and man, you just you're torn <laughs> up. You're like, why am I doing this? Well, you're doing it because it's cool. Yeah. And you'll be glad, and you're glad once it's over. You know, you're glad you did it once you've done it. So I, I saw you just push on through it, 
it I actually gives you a little. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it gives no, 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 no. It gives you a little edge to your performance, so Does that it? can you can actually make it work in your favor. Always stage fright, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Not always. Oh, I saw you on Country Weekly. You pumping gas. <laughs> They uh, said I was adaptable, didn't they? Yeah, you even pump gas. No, no, that was for a. Uh, I know. That I know. was just a fun little thing for charity. Yeah, I, I saw the picture of you yeah, under the hood yeah, of a yeah, park. Yeah, yeah. How about the White House performance? Sang in the White Talk House. Talk about nerve uh, stage fright. Yeah, there you go. That was 350 something out on the White House lawn, and and that was cool because you got to sing with the uh, the uh, National Symphony and. Uh, do some cool old USO songs, which I love doing. 